Hi and welcome back to Cheeky Crypto. My name is Nick and today guys we're jumping down into the world of Bitcoin and Ethereum, taking a look at what's been going on most recently, what we expect to happen next and all that wonderful stuff. As I get into the video, if you find it useful and informative, you know what to do, hit the like button. If you happen to be new to the channel, why not go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications and you will not, not miss another video or stream that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. And of course, if you haven't yet joined us in Discord, link is in the description down below, a fantastic place talking crypto 20 24 7 and we cover a lot more down in discord than we do on youtube so well worth checking it out okay guys let's get right down into this got a lot to cover and not a lot of time so let's talk about this right so basically on sunday uh afternoon evening um i kind of put a video out about a bear flag okay this bear flag was basically saying that we had a couple of interesting candles and that were closing outside this parallel channel whether you want to call it a bear flag whether you want to call it parallel channel one of the common things here is that we're setting ourselves up with these higher lows just up here okay and higher highs these are generally quite bearish indications um, as we can see over this side for example and when we have them go the other way as in lower lows and uh, lower highs we actually break to the upside here and we can see that we broke to the upside here so what we we're looking at specifically over the weekend was a couple of key things about this area not only were we you know setting these uh, higher lows and these higher highs we also had this candle this candle here was a couple of weeks ago this one actually confirmed a breakdown from this uh, this parallel channel okay then last week we actually closed right over here basically failing to get back inside this little yellow channel meaning that we're in a bearish scenario okay pulling us down lower okay so we're talking about that on Sunday and you know we can see that it kind of came through and you know we are kind of pulling back um, now obviously we can talk about edit wave theory which we'll do in a moment uh, but typically the price action here has been you know, following the principles that basically we're going down, we're seeing things as a bit more bearish uh, than bullish. And we've been talking about this for weeks. Okay. And um, so as we kind of break down here and we've come down lower than some of these previous lows, um, specifically today where we continue this motion to the downside, um, you know, new lower lows are on the horizon here. Okay. We can't just rule them out. Um, I guess at best we could hope for a double bottom, but I don't think that's necessarily going to hold up either. So let's go ahead. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to jump on up into our glass node data, talk a little bit around what is going on there before we kind of jump on into uh, the kind of price action of what's been going on most recently with VTC and Ethereum. So over here, we have our inflows and our outflows for all of 2022. We have 8.22 million going onto exchanges with 8.51 million coming off of exchanges. We can see the Bitcoin balance on exchanges actually coming down over time, although there's a little bit of an uptick here. We can see the net difference between the inflows and the outflows graphically. The number doesn't really matter too much, right? This is each one of these bars is 30 day average and it just shows us whether or not we've got an issue with uh, Bitcoin going onto exchanges or Bitcoin coming off of the exchanges. For the most part, numbers aren't overly impressive. Um, and they had this really flat moment just in the middle here as Bitcoin was moving up in price. Um, and basically, we we're seeing uh, Bitcoin transfer from uh, the whales to the shrimps, for example. And um, we'll talk more about those wallet sizes in a second. Um, down here, we have the hodl waves. The hodl waves are a good indication as to see whether or not long term holders are being shaken out of the space. This basically measures how long, time wise, um, Bitcoin has been static in a wallet. Okay, so has it moved or has it not moved? Uh, we've got more than 10 years, 7 to 10 years, 5 to 7 years three to five years two to three years one to two years and everything else i don't really care about okay so on the highest bracket the more than 10 years we can argue this is lost bitcoin 13.12 percent no change on the seven to ten years uh, 6.38 no change on the five to seven years we have a slight increase going from 5.11 to 5.12 this basically means that our three to five years has to go down in order to go up on the five to seven so we go from 14.38 to 14.35 we on the two to three years there's no change at 6.18 and on the one to two years there's a slight decrease uh, between 20.6 and 20.57 so 0 0.00 uh, 0.01 uh, percent there so uh, essentially that's actually quite low number it doesn't matter but we could argue maybe that one to two years have been shaken out the space because we could also see in the last 24 hours a slight increase going from 1.01 .01, uh, to 1.34 percent meaning that we've seen a little bit of an uptick in bitcoin moving around and we can see that actually one to two years has fluctuated a bit the six to 12 months has fluctuated the three to six months has fluctuated and so forth so uh, basically if you are holding bitcoin for less than two years you seem to be uh, more likely to move bitcoin right now 
than uh, than the people who have been holding it for slightly longer. Okay, let's jump on over into the inflows and the outflows. Now we are seeing the outflow, uh, so the inflows outpace the outflows. Uh, and as I said previously, and I usually cover this on all the streams that we do on the mornings, uh, essentially is that. Um, the red line is our supply and the green line is our demand. And what we want to see for a bull run is that the uh, demand outpaces the supply, as in the green line is above the red line of significance. It has to be up there significantly. We can't just have little small spikes like these. Uh, it has to be much, much higher than that. Um, so at the moment, we're still seeing uh, reasonable numbers, 50 in, 50,000 out. Um, so pretty much level pegging yesterday. Um, but other than that, yeah, for the most part, these numbers are not overly impressive at the moment. As we come on over into our uh, wallets, we've got the 10 Bitcoin or more, the 100 Bitcoin or more, the 1000 Bitcoin or more. Each of these graphs are showing us 90 days, okay, not a singular day. And uh, we can actually review whether or not these wallets are accumulating during these moments of volatility or they are dumping, panic selling on all that kind of stuff. So let's talk a little bit before we get into those three. Let's talk about the shrimps. Okay, the shrimps are basically your one Bitcoiners. This is a chart that's 120 days. And we can see that basically these guys like to buy Bitcoin. And um, basically every dip is a buy the dip opportunity. And when the bottom or the local bottom came in at 17,622 USDT, or according to CoinGecko, 19,000 USD, um, basically we started to see an uptick with these guys. Basically, the bottom is in, yay, we'll go buy, buy, buy. But every dip is a buy the dip opportunity. And as the price really has plummeted now, they don't really seem to be phased by it and they'll buy that as well. Um, so just worth noting that these guys aren't panic selling, at least not at the scale. Um, these wallets just continuously grow. Um, now, when we come back to this one, okay, we can see here that our dolphins are your high net worth individuals, your retail investors, just like your shrimps, just on a slightly higher level. And they actually bought that dip again, okay? So the price is pulling back down, they're buying the dip. So they buy the dip, local low, buy the pump. Every dip in there is also buy the dip opportunity. And a little bit of fluctuation right at the top there. So it's like to be a little bit nervous. Uh, but they have a dip to buy the dip opportunity and they continue to buy. Um, so basically, there's a lot of money coming into Bitcoin here temporarily. That's how I'm looking at it, because retail investors are going to be the emotional overreactors in the space. And as this uh, winter kind of kicks in, I do expect things to be slightly more bearish. Um, I say slightly. I think we're in for a pretty bad winter across Europe and uh, you know Asia and, and even the US to a degree. So uh, I'm not exactly expecting... Um, you know, these guys to be long-term investors i think they're uh, even the shrimps are going to end up selling off some bitcoin in order to warm their homes this winter winter shall we say um, but that being said you know at the moment they're buying this dip um so watch that space we've got the sharks slight uptick yesterday uh, as the price kind of put, fell back down again uh, probably doubling down on some scenarios here um, and the whale wallets yeah again they actually used that uh, that selling pressure right so as that price fell down they bought that that was exit sale uh, that was liquidity that they could scoop up there basically um so there's a little bit of an uptick with those guys as that price went back to the downside but for the most part uh since that 17,000 uh you know 622 usdt low and um, these guys have been selling into the pump and as the price has pulled back they buy it um, and to kind of reflect on what happened in 2017 2018 basically the price goes up to the all-time high and the wallets are going down okay it started selling off in uh, august 2017 and they finished selling by early january 2018 Okay, they sell into the pump. And then, of course, before the bottom comes in, they started to accumulate. Okay, they accumulate in September ahead of the bottom in December. So, again, this is what we're looking for. We're looking for this uptick in whale wallets um, before the bottom is actually in. We are not seeing it yet. We have not seen it yet. So that's what we are waiting for. We're waiting to see this level of accumulation with those whale wallets. Um, and that'll be a good indication that the bottom is potentially getting closer. Okay. Um, so in terms of all the data on BTC, there's a lot going on there. Um, but let's talk a little now about the price action of BTC. Okay. Because well, a lot's gone on, right? Um, so obviously we had our parallel channel. This is what you see in here. Uh, we had a five wave breakdown, okay, of which I've put down here. Um, you know, and we did kind of finish that in my opinion. It's also possible we're mapping out however you can remember guys uh, this little area down here 19,278 to 19,000 just down here right we were saying that maybe this is our kind of you know fifth wave um like this okay and still technically that's possible but it's overextending um i don't like it though i think it's probably better to actually have our 
fifth wave mapped in like this and now we start to talk about you know what this looks like okay because this does look like a five wave drop okay it's very very obvious that it's a five wave drop at this point okay and again you know if i were to just draw some basic trend lines on here um just draw these in and just draw one down here as well okay uh we have this okay basically this triangular wedge and we broke down from it now the obvious count okay is this one right here we go one two three four and five okay that's your obvious one however we should also consider that maybe there's some kind of um you know, pattern going on in here right and we should probably measure this distance right in here and move that over to here and yes that's also a 1.618 so we could also wrap this up a little bit we go one two all of this is wave three look for a bounce drop down into five okay and then of course we can't we have to consider what's going on over here as well right and um, so if I grab this low right here, take it to that high, move it over to, actually, it might just have to be this one. It might have to be this one over here, actually, looking at it. Um, so that would actually be that we might end up with a nesting going on with this one. Uh, so we come down, we go up. All of this would then have to be our way three. Then we'd have to go to four and five. Uh, and then again, we'd wrap that up again one last time right in here uh, all of that so you know there's there's a lot going on in there and lots of different ways of kind of looking at it i think the main ones to look at right now are these okay we completed the first five waves or the the th wave three we're looking for wave four bounce okay and then we're looking for the next move now if this is the case then my expectations are that we are going to move up to about nineteen thousand one hundred and twenty nine that put us right about here on a bounce okay and then once that is done we should then move from our bounce down to our 1.236 to 1.618 which would put us right about here okay basically 18,367 to 18,137 okay a couple of assumptions one we're having a typical wave four which would put us at about uh, the 38.2% Okay, uh, uh, nineteen thousand one hundred and twenty-nine dollars approximately, um, and then we'll pull back down. Okay, so a couple of assumptions within there. Finish that structure off with them have another bounce up, um, and then we'll talk about you know what that might look like. Because again, you know, it could just be that this is a three-three-five structure and it's just correction, correcting us down here. We're done. Then we can bounce up. Now um, let's take a look at the stochastic. Right on the hourly chart, you can see we're running out of momentum as we start to push up here. Um, so we're already pushing this up quite well, looking at the overall area on the horizon. So we're going to get rejected again at some point today. Um, on the four hourly, we're nice and oversold now, so that's okay. On the eight hour chart almost oversold so this next push to the upside and a potential pull to the downside getting us into that little zone over there and um, could put us uh, at a uh, an oversold area on the on the eight hour and then the daily also so um, we're looking pretty well from that kind of point of view the weekly still has a lot of progression to the downside to be had so we'll be looking for a bounce once we kind of finish this off so i think that yeah we're more than likely going to be coming down to uh, the low eighteen thousand area um, and then we'll be looking for a three wave bounce upwards after that okay um how high that's going to go i don't know it all depends on the momentum behind our price action here whether we're going to try to take uh you know go up a little bit higher around some of these areas that we were at but twenty thousand dollars is unlikely at this point meaning that our 22 and a half to 24 and a half just bounce just didn't happen we've been talking about that for the last few days it were kind of going to and from whether we'd have the momentum to take it out and just haven't um so that's kind of where we sit with this one right now so for bitcoin basically it looks like we have in, having this little bounce upwards uh where we hope for a typical 38.2 percent retracement towards 19,129 uh, once done we pull back and we kind of land somewhere between the 18,137 and 18,367 that's going to be an approximate kind of 1.236 uh, through to 1.618 and then we'll look for a three wave bounce where maybe we'll be able to push back to 19,000 maybe 19 and a half um, something to that effect and uh, then really I mean it might be bigger than that but let's see how that one plays out and then we'll drop back down again and I do think we'll be heading into new lower lows now one of the things here that we should consider is a five wave drop we're talking about a zigzag pattern okay um, and basically we're talking five three five three five so if I grab hold of this and I move this up here we just move this over to this high point 
right here we were talking about basically 15,930 to marry up on our one to one ratio when it comes to BTC so basically if I grab hold of my ABC basically all of those five waves are A this is a really small unpredictable this is the thing with wave B's right we're expecting that slightly higher push but wave B's are so unpredictable you just cannot get them um, right then of course moving down towards our lower end targets okay and um, so yeah for the most part would look for a 535 um or 53535 five, inside this area here so if i grab hold of this um this move that we've currently had here basically is five through one two three four and then five like that okay that's kind of what we'll look for that would then actually finish off the entire structure would basically complete our corrective move here for btc if we were to come down lower than uh, 13,600 from this area up here, then basically that's going to mean that we're in a trend. In the second that we hit 14,600, we're trending on the on the weekly chart to the downside, which basically does indicate um, basically lower than $10,000 BTC at that point, okay? So there's a few obvious concerns we talk about, um, and I'll talk more about that stuff tomorrow probably when I do another live stream. Um, but for now, Bitcoin, yeah, it's, it's a bearish outlook, but there was some some bouncing that's probably going to occur within there. OK, let's um, let's go ahead and jump on into a little bit of Ethereum, right, because there's some stuff going on there that's probably worth uh, knowing about as well. Right. So um, let's get into this. Right. So basically inflows and outflows for Ethereum uh, currently tracking up here at 73.1 uh coming onto exchanges with 75.31 coming off of exchanges you can see the um basically the exchange balance of ethereum bouncing around a fair amount and recently we've seen a little bit more in the inflow department than the outflow okay we can see that a net difference is a 30-day average um, from the inflows and the outflows what's the difference between the two graphically represented here we can see that actually it's not good uh, we have some going on to the exchanges in a pretty significant way in July. Uh, we can see relatively flat periods in August and into September. We can see a little bit more um, coming off the exchanges, but it's hardly anything. Um, so this actually gives us a reasonable amount of concern for Ethereum. OK, it just indicates that we are seeing a significant amount of more Ethereum going on to exchanges and transferring between participants. As I come over to the inflows and the outflows, we can see that we have a slight spike to care yesterday with 600,000 going on to exchanges, 400,000 coming off. Again, all of these numbers are very insignificant in total, so it's not overly concerning at this point, um, but well worth kind of keeping a close eye on it. In terms of the whale wallets, well, we have um, the light blue lines here are the wallets and the dark blue are the price. Um, so as this price is pushed up, these guys are buying the price, uh, are buying the pump, uh, essentially. Um, these guys, obviously, in the middle here, yep, we'll buy that as well. Whereas our whales are actually dumping it, okay? So we're seeing that it comes out of these wallets and goes over to these guys' wallets. But again, this data is, um, it basically just shows us emotions. Uh, we can see that these guys are basically just buy, 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 buy. Uh, these guys are buy, sell, buy, sell, buy, sell, and you know, not really making terribly too much sense. Um, but the worst ones are the whale wallets because they actually have three different size wallets inside this bracket. 10,000 Ethereum, uh, 100,000 Ethereum, and 1 million Ethereum in the wallets. They're all equal in size. So you get three different kind of uh, I guess personality traits on how they operate and um, basically this one's bouncing around a lot and I think this is because there's a mix of just different kind of people in there um, but essentially it looks either like they're manipulating the price or they are uh, just emotional retail investors so really not giving us too much of the insight unfortunately um, but for the most part, um, we see an uptick with uh, 1,000 ETH wallets and 100 ETH wallets, um, but basically coming out of the uh, whale wallets. Okay, um, so let's go ahead and um, pull up our price action here because we've got some obvious things that we should be talking about, right? Um, so the first things first is obviously that yeah, we're we're trending to the downside on a micro scale. Okay, so we have our five waves down, we had our three waves going up, and we were hoping to push this up towards 1,780. Failed to do so. And it does appear that our high point was actually now here, um, coming in at 1,687. So we're going to go ahead and just remove that bit and just pull our ABC structure into here. That means that our wave two is at this point, and we go ahead and get rid of this. Okay, this also means that I can take this measurement and now put this over here. 
and it can scope out what's going to happen next okay so for our way three we're looking for five three five three five and we're looking to come down now um as low as nine hundred and forty eight dollars okay there will be some bounces on the journey though okay and um, right now it appears that we're in a wave four okay and um, so if i go ahead and grab this this is a micro scale of course one two this looks like three four and five like so okay um it could overextend it could do various different things but that's kind of how i look at it essentially if i zoom back out of this and just bring this into view let me see if i can do this there we go um what we're looking for is basically a wave one to kind of come down here so i'm kind of wave two nice bounce as you can see so i'm kind of really big wave three wave four then finally wave five and we need to hit this area of um 948 dollars so wave one might come down deeper for example wave three might have to come down deeper wave four will do whatever wave four does um, and so forth but that's going to be the expectation 900 and 48 dollars okay based on the current high point there then we'll have a significant bounce upwards and then we'll finally fall back down towards our targets of 526 to 724 now this might sound super bearish and like crazy speak and all that kind of stuff i get called all the different names under the sun essentially you know these are the rules of elliott way theory i'm not making them up they are black and white and they're very very simple to follow um as long as we follow them and we don't just be subjective to thinking about you know fundamental analysis or anything like that if we're to look at it from a technical analysis standpoint elliott wave theory is tracking people's behavior and this behavior is telling us that we are likely to come down to these numbers here okay now it's no guarantee that you come right the way down to these areas but these are expectations within elliott wave theory okay uh, obviously with a subwave count we'll be able to adjust this and make it more accurate this is our macro count on our weekly chart okay our weekly chart is indicating this as our low point and um, so we're very very bearish across many different time frames this is obviously just the hourly chart for ethereum and we're tracking these micro movements coming on down into these ranges okay um, and i'm expecting it to be five three five three five because that's what would be expected within our fifth wave of everything else that we've been tracking this entire time okay we pushed up reasonably well here and this big dashed line is where those whale wallets were buying up ethereum to prop the price up a little bit further and once we actually cross down lower than 1276 it invalidates any potential move upwards uh, above our 2159 invalidation point of our wave four um, under a five wave structure coming up here okay and so i'm not seeing any reason why we would not cross down lower than our 1276 level and um, so i'm not really talking about this five wave structure upwards now okay because i don't think it's actually going to play out um with that being said let's check our momentum uh, we actually have a decent momentum on our hourly chart so that's worth probably keeping a close eye on okay uh, we have our four hourly chart in the oversold area the eight hourly chart no way near oversold on the slow line so there's actually a lot of progress to the downside to be had on the eight hour chart the daily has barely moved okay so if we want to be like talking about being bullish on this thing this is not a bullish indication for ethereum at all the fact that we have not managed to take us a daily stochastic rsi anywhere near the oversold area means that we've got a long way to go down our weekly is in a very similar position so from a macro standpoint our weekly and our daily are giving us a very clear indication that there's going to be some negative price action on the eight hour and the four hour and the one hour they're basically saying that we are likely to see some bouncing and we know this is going to be the case this is not a straight line drop there's a few pretty significant drops in here but they're not going to be straight lines to the downside they're going to be bouncing around as you can kind of see so i'm expecting some volatile movements uh, for ethereum but i think we're going to gradually bounce our way to the downside where we end up moving ourselves lower than one thousand dollars triggering our structure to the downside and basically becoming into um, this kind of low zone for ethereum and we're looking to kind of bring it down lower than a thousand to have a significant bounce and then finally finish it off into those lows and um, be interesting to kind of see how it plays out obviously ethereum anything is possible in crypto right we could just invalidate a lot of this stuff but i'm just not expecting it the minimum expectation is five more down um in here so basically five three five three five and basically finishing off the same kind of five waves that we had that would keep us um above a thousand dollars but probably still invalidate our macro uh, or eight hourly kind of five wave structure upwards. So we want to be aware of that. For the most part, though, I'm expecting downward price pressure. I'm not really expecting too much to the upside, but do expect a couple of bounces in there for Ethereum. 
Um, so overall, guys, I'm going to leave the video right there. Sorry, it's a brief one. I'll be back tomorrow for another live stream on both Bitcoin and Ethereum. So do join me for that. If you want to know a little bit more about what is going on, join us down in Discord. Links are all in the description below. Uh, check out everything down in the description and everything from the you know, Ledger, Nexo, um, Patreon, and of course, the community-led Cheeky Podcast. Um, other than that, guys, I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a fantastic day.